ladies and gentlemen, we're going to call the meeting to order tonight, and I'm going to ask if anyone has a cell phone, put them in the silence position, not to interrupt. Anybody's going to do any recordings, I would appreciate that if they come before the chair and get approval. Other than that, uh, we'll proceed with our meeting. And uh, roll call, Mr. So. Uh, you have five members, uh, Mr. Trudell, Mr. Heath, Mr. Worthing, Worthing, Mr. McDowell, and Mrs. Brock. Okay. All right. Um, I'm, the next class is going to be citizens participation. Someone would like to talk to us. I would like to first uh, well, uh, ask Nicole Nault and Charlene. Uh, I, I can't get your last name. I'm sorry. Erasmus. Erasmus. Okay. They have um, requested to come before the FinCom with a package. You want them sitting down here or over there? Well, no, they can come right up here. Why don't you ladies come right up here? And Need another chair? Just, you, 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 you can get yeah, one right here. here. Okay. Sit up All right, ladies. Uh, Give the board your name again, and uh, here is what you have to say to us. I'm Nicole Lott, and I'm Charlene Van Der Um We're juniors at Warren Senior High, and having a leaky roof affects us all as students. So we started a petition stating, I, as a student of Wareham Senior High School, am requesting a new roof for the school gymnasium. So far, we've had 230 students sign our petition, and we plan on getting more before the town meeting in October. Um, reasons for our petition are um, mildew, um, the leakage can call, cause mildew and mold, which is a health hazard to all students. Indoor sports are changing home games to away games because of the rain in the gym, so it's costing the school money for buses. The, the, the leakage can cause damage to the gym for leading to future repairs. The Wareham High School gym is an emergency shelter for the town of Wareham, and it's an unsuitable one if the <coughs> So we hope you'll consider our petition. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? No. And, um, and we have, okay, do you have a couple more packages? Because we've got a couple more folks coming in uh, that we can look at. We, will, um, we want to thank you both for coming in and taking the time. And, and getting involved, and uh, we're all hopeful, and we're very supportive of the of the articles that are going forth to the town meeting, and we look forward to seeing you both at the town meeting. And again, thank you for coming. Excuse me. Have you given any thought to going in front of the selectmen as well? Um, there was actually a meeting with the selectmen last night, and we didn't find out about it until today, but if there's another meeting, then I'm going. Okay. There is one. It's not next week, but the following Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And if you need help getting in touch with the, the chairman of the selectmen, we can we can point you in the right direction and you can go through the town administrator. But I think it's a good idea and, it, and, and that it needs to go in front of the selectmen as well. Okay. Thank you. This needs to go in more than a week. That too. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I'm late. And again, thank you. we thank you both for coming by. Okay. And we have voted on this. It's right. Yes, we have. And, and we have voted in favor. Okay. All right, great. If somebody else can do it, we'll share it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Do we have any other citizen participation? Okay. Giving, uh, giving the uh, situation for more citizen participation, we will move on to the new business tonight, and the new business is going to be primarily the um, warrant. Madam Chairman? Yes. I have a quick question. Is, is it appropriate to talk now to the union representatives here in Sobel and Quinto, or is it more for? No, I actually was waiting for you to come. I, that's why I asked for citizens' participation. That's right. Fair. I kind of got the hint the second time. But uh, Would you like to go back to citizens' participation? Uh, if you don't mind. No, I don't mind. Okay. 
If, if I can, Madam Chairman, uh, there's been a lot of conversation about uh, the so-called Quindle. Yes. And uh, with me tonight, I have Jen Braley, who is the um, president of the uh, union, the Patrolman and Sergeant Union. The Superior Officer Union couldn't be here. But we have the attorney also, Jennifer Smith, from the um, Patrolman Sergeant Union, as well as Detective Ferry um, I must say that in my years dealing with issues regarding collective bargaining agreements and so forth, I have never heard of committees being formed to go after a benefit that has been in place for so long with meaning 20 or 25 percent cut for my employees. Now, first of all, you're mistaken on that. Yes, and, and that's what we need to clear up, and I appreciate that because. Mm -hmm. There are more stories going around about a quote-unquote FinCom Quinville committee, and we need to at least clear the air, because I have, I have a 50 police officers who are pretty cranked up about it, and, as anyone would be. I understand. So if we could kind of clear the air and, and, and talk about it, it, I think for the employee basis, at least that would settle their concerns. Okay, and I'm going to turn this right over. Marilyn's not here right now. No. Okay, then um, Tom, uh, do you have anything? You you were, were on the committee, and uh, let me before let me. Basically, the committee was formed based on the legislative on uh, on the, uh, the the court order that came down recently. Uh, when when the town of Wareham signed on to the Quinn Bill in 1974. The legislative body, meaning the town meeting, decided to pay, to sign on to the Quinn Bill, and the, the state, we would match the state's contribution. Well, in 2009, it is my understanding that the Quinn Bill, the state stopped paying for it. So the town has picked up the entire share. Our job as a finance committee is to let the selectmen make them aware of financial situations that are we are facing the town and that was the reason behind putting the Quinville subcommittee together. None of us really understood it at the time. Now I'm going to go further to um, my colleague Mr. Heath because he can further expand on it and maybe Mr. McDonald as well afterwards. And Tom. The reason for the, for the subcommittee was just that. There was a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of uh, information that was missing, uh, a lot of things that nobody was quite sure of, and we wanted to make sure that we got everything right, including had, discussing with legal counsel if necessary. The, what it basically boils down to, as Mrs. Bronx said, right, in September 11th, on September 11th, 1974, a town meeting passed a motion to adopt the Quinville Educational Incentive Program. But also in that motion limited the town strictly to its portion, or basically 50%. As we know, the state came back and decided to stop funding their portion, first uh, by a reduced percentage and then in total. All right, um, somewhere along the line on the town side, it was lost that the town was only authorized to pay its 50%. So they continued to pay the money going forward, but it was also the problem that there was the case that was sitting in front of the state Supreme Court, or going through the court system, regarding what the town's obligations were. All right. Our contract, as was written, in, I believe, in 2004, all right, which is still, I understand, continuously in effect because our last decision with the unions was based on arbitration, all right, refers specifically to the Quinn Bill. Doesn't have any other language other than the Quinn Bill, and applies exactly to the associate, the, the bachelor's, and the master's degrees. There is also an educational incentive for 2% for those with 10 college credits, and 4% for those, I believe, with 40 college credits. Those are in no way impacted by anything going forward. The problem we came down to in April was the court came back and said, based on the language of the Quinn Bill, and that's critically important, based on the language of the Quinn Bill, the towns were not obligated to pay the state's portion. 
So now we found ourselves in a, sort of an awkward position. First off, we had paid for two years, when technically we shouldn't have paid for two years because we weren't authorized. But it had been lost in the, shall we say, the, the governance of the town. The people that were responsible to keep track of that had lost track of it, and we paid. But more importantly, what happened is when the court ruling came down, we said, wait a minute, that affects us immediately. Absolutely today. Right? And at that point, we had already spent the full amount of the town's portion you know, as April 2011 at that portion. All right. However, we continued to finish the year off. We started the current year, again, once again, as part of our budgeting process, we looked at the educational incentive. The town is still obligated for, I believe, some $202,000. We have not reached that point, but we will reach it sometime in January. At that portion, at that point, rather, the town's selectmen have no authority to issue payroll cash because the town is not obligated. We have no authority. The selectmen have no authority. And it's also, it's not a negotiated item. The Quinn bill is a dead issue. Ed education incentive might be a negotiable item. However, the Quinn bill is not really a negotiable item. It's been ruled on by the state Supreme Court. Now, unless you find a way to get into the federal court and get the Supreme Court to go over and above it, that's the situation. All right? So I, what we did with our city committee was to find out what the story was, because we're going into a budgeting session again, and we know what kind of physical situation we're in. We also do advise the selectmen when we see them in jeopardy of violating, violating state law. We already had problems with transfers last year. We're having lots of problems with the Department of Revenue. They are very unhappy with our accounting. They're very unhappy with our appropriations. They're very unhappy with our transfers. And they're very unhappy with our financial situation. So it was appropriate, in my opinion, for us to take a serious look at this and determine whether or not our selectmen were acting in accordance with the town's laws. And they are at this point, but will not be as of January. So at that point, we decided that we would issue a letter warning them that they were about to spend monies that they were not authorized to spend. So is your contention, if I may, Madam Chairman, is your contention that on all unfunded mandates, including teachers and other things, that no matter what it is, all unfunded mandates, we're just going to you're just going to stop them all because the state's our full of unfunded mandates. If I may, Madam Chairman, yeah, our, con our contention is the motion at town meeting was specifically worded to 50% of the educating education center. That's where we stand. Well, I'll, I'll defer it to um, counsel for the union now because she surely got versed in talking about collective bargaining rights and so forth. And this this community seems to be very much litigious in the fact that we seem to go to court on a lot of issues that are foolish and end up costing the town a fortune. And I'll tell you one thing, this isn't going to go away. Because I have 50 people up there, including myself, who everyone in this town depends on and put their life on the line. And the way they're being treated right now with these kind of discussions without them having any input is criminal at best. Very frustrating for me as the leader of that hold organization. On, hold on, hold on. No, now, can I let, let him finish what I wish to and, respond when he's done? Thank you. And and I have a morale problem, and rightfully so, for the men and women up there who are trying to pay their mortgages, where this is all of a sudden just pulled out from under them. All of a sudden we hear through rumors and so forth that there's a move afoot, right? We should have been asked to be brought in, labor council should have been involved, and we should have had an opportunity to talk to you as ladies and gentlemen rather than find out and see minutes of meetings that were floating around. Thank you, and Madam I'm expressing Chair, what's mind. coming from 50 people as yes. well as myself. Madam Chair, if I might. Yes, you may. I, understand, I, may, I, I may understand the Chief has 50 people who are very upset. However, if we pay money, which we should not be paying, which we know the number now to be some $160,000. We're going to have 22,000 other people that are going to be very upset. I also understand their situation of paying their mortgages. I also understand that the people who will have to pay this benefit that's not been appropriated properly make, in many instances, an average, well, I know it's not an instance, the average income of this town, right, is 25% of what most of our officers make with their overtime. This is so our job as a committee 
is to advise the town meeting in its budgetary process and to also advise whenever we see a situation where money is going to be spent without being properly appropriated. That's where we are. Now, we have not at any point in our discussions used such terms as, I think this is criminal. So I take objection to that language. I would also say that in general business, all right, first off, this conversation was amongst us, the word to get out. We would love to have had you come in originally. All right, this has been on this committee's table for two years in front of the cameras, all right, in public. It's been discussed. Nobody asked us, nobody approached us. I personally talked with you about this exact situation and nothing was done. So I have problems with that. We know that the Police Chiefs Association has also put out information on the court's ruling. We knew where everything stood in April. We should have addressed it then. I've, in my discussions with the selectmen, you know, I, I have had a couple of selectmen that I've talked to. What I've said to them is you should have been brought in at the beginning of the year because you might have even wanted to change how it was paid during the course of the year. All right, as I said before, educational incentive may still be on the table for negotiations. However, the Quinn bill has been resolved by the state court. We've talked to legal counsel, talked to them the day after the uh, ruling was made by the Supreme Court. And town counsel advised us at that time that we were not obligated. However, cautioned us that if we go beyond the point of appropriation, we might set a precedent that could not be reversed. So therefore, we felt, hey, we've got too many opinions going too many different ways. Okay. I would also raise one last thing. According to Chapter 40, Mass Law 41, Section 41 and 42, all payrolls are to be attested to by the department heads that they are proper before they're submitted for payment. I would ask if the chief has been attesting to that, and if so, did he consider this information in his attesting? I think your information is dead wrong, and I take offense when you consider that our officers are making more money than the average citizen in town. I don't see everybody carrying guns, wearing bulletproof vests, putting up what these guys put up with on a daily basis. All right, now, and one last thing, if I knew there was a committee, Mr. Heath, and I was never told it was a committee. I surely would have been asked. I, I would have picked, put the time in. Okay. I would have made sure that all unions were represented as well. Thank you. Okay, let me just, and let, let, let me just be clear that um, Mr. Heath is the former chairman of the FinCom and, and, and was very involved with this as, and, and has, as he said, we've been working on it for two years. Um, Marilyn Donahue has been, she, are, has been the chairman of this particular committee. And and again, we're not out to hurt anybody. We just want to make sure that things are being done right in the town. It, it, it can go back to town hall, and, 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 and as Mr. Heath says, educational incentives are still on the table. We're not out to hurt anybody. We want to do things right. And that's all that this committee is trying to do. It's not our decision. It's the people in Graham's decision. And I understand that. I didn't mean it to be contentious in that respect, but if there was a committee form and we received something and said, hey, we're having a committee, we'd like to sit down and talk about things, that would have been fine. I didn't, yes, Frank and I have had a couple of discussions. Yeah. We had a good working relationship with Mr. Chairman, but with the committee being formed, I think that we should have had an opportunity. But the, but the thing is, it is public. And it has been, it is public, it is on TV. It's on with all due respect. I don't sit home watching this. Well, I got my turn. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, Marilyn's next. Go Thank ahead, Marilyn. I appreciate your passion in defending your offices. That's exactly what you should be doing. I don't think this is the forum that we should be doing it at. I agree. Okay. And it wasn't proper for us to invite you into the subcommittee. It was a subcommittee. We met briefly to review the legalities, the background, the history. Um, and how we got to this point. It was a fact-finding committee. 
this is this discussion and there's be much greater discussion that will take place beyond this is not the proper venue or the proper time as we're faced with an October deadline for town meeting and we have to get all of our articles reviewed mm -hmm. this is something as mr. Heath very eloquently and covered most of the points I was going to make uh, stated we have been looking at this since the state stopped payment I understand you have issues. everyone has issues when their income is going to be reduced but I think you're looking at the wrong people. I think we need to look at the state and why they're not paying. Oh, we I... have issues. If we're paying money that we are not legally supposed to be paying, we can be on the hook there as well. So there's a lot of different facets that go into this, um, all of which will be reviewed before any decisions are made. We are not a decision-making body. So you know, it's a good place to get your practice arguments out, but ultimately this will go we will make a recommendation that will go before the Board of Selectmen that may go back before town meeting. This is just the first step. And the subcommittee um, did whatever research we needed to do by talking to people that we felt we needed to speak with um, relative to the history, as I said, the history and the legalities of it. That is exactly where it came from. Um, so certainly there will be further debate on this, but at this point I think we really should get to the business with our deadlines. Okay. All right. I'll, 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 I'll allow a brief comment from you and from Dominic, and hopefully we can... Everything that we dealt with, or what the subcommittee dealt with, and what we dealt with is all public information. Nothing we had was secret information. It was all public information. The job was to be a fact-finding mission. We don't issue an opinion. We don't issue... We don't... We're not part of the we negotiation. We do issue opinion. Well... We don't need to, we don't need to. But our job is, as a finance committee, is to look at the finances of the town from a budgetary standpoint. And this is a budgetary issue from our standpoint because we're talking about a sum of money that is going to affect the budget. So that is what our charge is as a committee. Um, you know, personally, I have friends, obviously, that are, that are police officers, and people aren't happy right now, and I can understand that, but I still think there's, there may be some misinformation flowing around that's caused it and made it worse. So at this point, we're not a decision-making body. We're dealing with public information that anybody out there can get. We're not, and we're putting together a report because it affects 22,000 people in this town, and that's what we did. Right. Is there, right. so real, 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 real quickly, what? has our letter of recommendation been, been issued yet? No, the board no. It hasn't been put together yet. It is put together. It's just it's edited and it's ready to go to the board as well. Okay. The reason why I'm saying is I understand that the the town, but not that to be the buffer here or anything, but the people who are it's it's affecting their 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 pay. You know, I, I still think that they should have probably had some input into into what we're going to say. I know that we're looking at it as legal and bottom line, but sometimes bottom line isn't always right. You know, shouldn't, we, shouldn't that let have some kind of input in, in, we into what it is? We don't have the right to make any decisions in this board. No, I we understand have, that. We have the I right, know that. We, we are fact-finding and we are charged with watching the finances of this town. And that's it. We're, we're an advisory board only. But when the finances affect certain, uh, okay. Okay. Right. okay. David, I'll let, I'll, 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 I'll let you comment briefly. Go ahead, David. When we started this process, Chief, I think that most of us were absolutely in the dark on mm -hmm. what was the state's requirement, what was the state's obligation, what we had to do, didn't have to do. But at some point, the selectmen have to be brought up to speed also. There's no intent to go behind backs. The intent was to find the information. Meetings were published. We put on our subcommittee uh, for reports each in town meeting. We gathered some information. That information goes to selectmen. What they do or don't do with that information is going to affect you. But the point is we advise them it's up to them to take that action. We as a finance committee are an advisory to town meeting. Part of that is also advising the, the selectmen. We are doing that. All right. Unless there's any other new information, I'm going to let you speak. 
Did you want? Did you have any new information for me? I, I don't know if you. It, it, no. Okay. So just briefly, my name is Jennifer Smith, and I am an attorney uh, with Sandra Leaguers, the firm that represents um, the patrol officers through their affiliation with MASCAP. Um, thank you for letting me participate, and thank you also for your diligence in researching this. It's obvious that you have spent a lot of time on it. Um, and I just, there were just two points that I wanted to make. The first was, I understand that this is an advisory committee and that you went on a fact-finding mission, and I think that information about the 1974 vote is, is really important. Um, but what I'll add to that is that the, whatever the initial town, initially the town voted, the Board of Selectmen, who's the designated bargaining agent of the town through 150E, then bargained a contract with the patrol unit that says, we'll adopt 150E and then we'll pay associates 10%, bachelors 20%, masters 25%. And I think that I agree that if the language just said, we'll adopt Quinn Bill and pay our obligation under it, that maybe it's true that the town would, uh, that payments beyond what was bargained would uh, be in conflict with the Adams decision. But the additional language in the contract obligates the town to continue making the payments on the Quinn Bill at 100%, 100% until the town bargains with the union otherwise to modify the collective bargaining agreement. The Adams versus City of Boston decision, the, the SJC decision that we've been talking about, deals with very specific contract language where the City of Boston said, you know, we'll adopt the Quinn Bill, we'll pay our share, and if the legislator ever downwardly adjusts it, then we'll own, then we'll pay uh, five, 10, and 12 and a half percent of the obligation of the Quinn Bill be, or, uh, as an educational incentive because um, that's all that we're being reimbursed for, plus whatever money they give us. And the Supreme Court said, yeah, their contract, and the, the, what the case was trying to do was trying to say, well, you know, you, once you adopt the Quinn Bill, you have to pay the full amount whether or not you get reimbursed. And the city was saying, no, you bargained with us that we would only pay half. And um, the union was saying, well, that is, um, you know, we may have bargained that, but that's not what we meant. We, you, still have, you still owe us the money. And the Supreme Court said, no, you know, absent a 7D requirement listing the law as an exemption from collective bargaining, there, anything you bargain can, uh, you know, adjust the statute. And the statute says they only have to pay um, what they're reimbursed, and because they bargained language that says that, they're fine. In this case, you, the, the town has, it sounds like you, you feel, unfortunately, from your perspective, bargained to pay the entire obligation. And until they move on that, or until the parties reach agreement on that, that obligation still exists. Um, I know that, um, you know, I'm seeing some heads shake, but the, the bottom line is that under Massachusetts General Law 150E, um, the parties have an obligation to maintain the status quo uh, of their agreements until they reach an agreement to change the agreement. We have an agreement to pay the uh, extra educational incentive at 100%, and until we, there's an agreement to do otherwise, that's the town's obligation. I, I know that you're going to send your letter to the Board of Selectmen, irrespective of what I say, and I understand that. I just, I think it's important to understand that it's possible that you're not under, that you're not understanding that that's the state of the law, and that you might have uh, written your letter based on an erroneous premise. Madam Chair, if I may, yeah. we did this, uh, you know, it was discussed with our town council. All right, and plus the decision, plus the decision was looked at very closely, and the decision did not require that it be part of the contract. That's why it was such a shocker, shocked everybody, because they thought it would be very finite to the, whoever was named in the suit, and it wasn't even beyond that. All right, and you know, so we have a different opinion coming back from our town council, and that's probably something that'll have to be talked about. I understand we don't want to necessarily run up fees. I don't want to run up fees. Okay, but we do have a problem, and as I said before, we are under the microscope with the Department of Revenue. And we just cannot risk any more situations where they come back to us and say, you inappropriately spent, appropriated, or even recorded your financial information. We have real problems with the Department of Revenue. Right? And as I said, we have legal opinion that says this is the right footing that we were only required. The contract reads only in accordance with the Quinn Bill. The court decision was based on the Quinn Bill language, so therefore the contract includes the Quinn Bill. 
So and I, I, and I so I that's why say, I say you're going to have to talk to our town council. Again, that's patently wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. exactly. Right. Right. And, and, and can I ask one? Can I ask that question? Point too? The question that I guess is floated around also that there might be an article at town meeting. The easiest way to solve this whole thing is for the town to have an article at, uh, on its warrant at a town meeting that says we're going to pick up the unreimbursed portion. Okay. Now, it's never been ever discussed taking anything away from anybody. The only thing that's ever been discussed is not paying money that we're not authorized to pay. Exactly. That's the whole thing. We have not even talked about what has been paid. You know, if I cut you a check on your payroll and I overpay you by 50000 you don't get to keep it. You have to return it. Okay? Well, you know, we don't even want to talk about that. All we're talking about is the current. We're coming up on budget season. Right? The town budget is due in 45 days. And one of the questions we have to consider is what is going to happen to educational incentive. Right? And we know where that budget, what that budget is going to look like. It's going to be pretty bloody. It seems like there's no immediacy on the part of anyone then to sit down, not just this body, to sit down and straighten this out. Sure. You know, it's like this should be this should be something that the administration of the town is saying, hey, you're right, Frank. The budget's doing 45 days and so forth, and hey, guys, sit down. Stay in the room for three days if you have to, but straighten this thing out in a collective bargaining fashion and do it the right way and come back and... We don't disagree with you, Chief. Can and, I finish and, off on that, though, too? Yeah, yeah, that's, we don't disagree with you. Again, it's not our decision. We, you know, we, we don't have the authority to do any of this. You know, we're just doing our job as the as, as people with town of Wareham and the Finance Committee. And we follow the chart into the letter, and we and, and, and let me tell you, I sat in that room with the Department of Revenue, and I'll tell you, it's not pleasant. They're not, you know, and, and they've got every right to be concerned with us, the way things are going. So, and Donna, you have my word, and Frank also, and I work close with both of you guys, yep. especially. All right, yep. I will make this a priority. Get us straight. That's a valid point. I mean, the damn budget's doing 45 days, yeah. and you guys got to know if that. Hundred and fifty grand is in or out or what's going on. Exactly. Well, I'll push that issue okay. rapidly. Uh, Chief, to finalize this discussion, really, and of course you always have the word, last word, I guess. Your comment was there seems to be no immediacy. That's why there was a subcommittee. That's why it was held in public, and they held their their, their meeting was posted, held in public, and recorded. And recorded. Yeah. All right, so that it would be there for the public record because we saw that there was no immediacy, and we wanted to force it with the board of selectmen. By putting a subcommittee together with a report and letter that said you have to pay attention to this. It affects the lives of every person in this town and it affects town employees. So if nothing else, we might say the committee appears to have been very successful to this point and will probably even be more successful by the end of this meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, I'm not. I was just going to say this is obviously well above, I mean, my head. From a legal standpoint but you're right there was no immediacy this should have been addressed months and months and months ago many towns addressed this before the ruling and i and we just have never been proactive in this town no. and and now we're faced with a situation where we're the bad guys because we did what we were supposed to do we have a fiduciary responsibility to look at the financial aspects of this town and the budgetary needs that's what we did and okay. you know that's it Barry, any new discussion any new points, I'm going to end this discussion on this. And I thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. All right. All right. Moving on to the warrant, ladies and gentlemen. Can we go see if Derek's on his way down? He said he'd be there. He, um, he went to play with the COA for a minute. He said he'd see us. Yeah, he did. Would you like me to no. do a little walk in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we have one question for the, the chief on uh, $2,500 or something? Oh, oh, oh. oh chief. Hey, chief. Uh, sorry, oh, oh, sorry. Oh. There's another question about the audience. Are you here? We have a question. All right. Who, 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 Tom, which question is that? It's a different different article. But we, we, we're here. I invited you here. I know. When I but you were stuck in. Yeah, yeah. I know. Okay, I know. If you can take a minute to answer, no, I appreciate it. Yep. Okay. It's, it's the article four. Okay. Um, equipment repairs. This is about the pier. Twenty twenty five hundred dollars. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We, we we just wanted to know. Uh, the question was the concern was what is it? 
Was it is it twenty five hundred dollars for the peer account? Is that what it was? Forty six hundred. Forty six. Yeah, but the, the the particular item that they were concerned about is the, the bottom twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Tom, you're right. Um, the twenty the twenty five hundred dollars for the equipment repairs. Oh yeah, you know the um, electronic gates and so yeah. forth. We have to bring people in. You know the gates yeah. up and down. We have to bring people in every year before, after, and during, and that keeps Keep the maintenance it. well low. Okay. But another issue that's out there in Northland Wood, hopefully we're going to get these kiosk things doing, yeah. and which will put an end to a lot. Is that, is that a contract we have for maintenance? Is that gate, or we yeah. just do it on an we have, no, no, we have we have people come in the regular people. Machine, yeah. So this wasn't this wasn't part of your regular budget? No, it's always taken out of the peer account. It's kind of like I think uh, I think municipal maintenance also gets certain amounts that does something. This has been historic long before I was here. Yeah. Um my only question was because I don't know when it started. Was this actually a repair that's already been done or this is like a regular? Right no, these are maintenance agreements for the following year. Maintenance agreements, okay. Yeah. All right. Repair and maintenance of the gates and those kind of things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry about that. Okay. He's still in the meeting. Is he? Yeah, somebody, maybe the chief can stir him out. <laughs> okay. um, I well, can't do that. All right. Let's, let's uh, move down to, okay, what articles, okay, transfer to the Harvard, transfer to the Harvard. Do we want to discuss the Quinto while we're? No. 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 Not tonight. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you wrote a very nice letter, Merlin. Let's get through the votes that we have to get through first. If okay. I, could, yeah, I apologize for being late. If I had not been detained at work, I could have been here and tried to cut that off. It does provide you with a lot of living here. As much as I love being here, it doesn't, make, it doesn't pay the mortgage. Okay, everything that we have to vote on right now is Derek. We need Derek. One, two, well, the re reconsideration for other articles, is there any reconsideration for other articles? That's something. Any new information? Well, there is new information. On? The Old Town Hall. Yeah. According to the newspaper, WCTV is looking to move, move, which one of the issues and arguments that were brought up during that period of time was that we had a tenant in it that helps it along. Well, that tenant's leaving. Well, wait, wait. They still have a lease for a certain amount of time. I'm sorry, I apologize. Through you. Yeah, through you, though. Okay. I, I believe that I heard what, what Mr. McCoy Larry say is true. But they also have a lease for a certain amount of time, which gives us time to find a new tenant. It's not an immediate move out, that's what I heard. Okay. That's, you know, that was that what I mean. It gives us a little time. I'm not saying you're still right. It. You're still right. We're losing a ton of it. Sorry. It, it, Don't look at me like that. I'll stop. Go ahead, Tom. I'm, I'm on the board at WTCB. Oh, okay. WTCB. And we're a long way from the okay. building, and it wouldn't happen until 2015. Oh. Soonest. Okay. That's, that's okay. information oh, I need to know. Um, Regardless of whether we have a tenant in it or not, I mean, at some point, should we lose a tenant, um, we, of course, would want to get somebody else to rent it or, or find another use for it, but it's a town building. I mean, it, we can't let it fall down, number one. Number two, um, that's what CPC funds are for. It's so it's certainly a darn good use for CPC funds. Mm -hmm. Not saying, sorry, three, <laughs> not saying it isn't. I just said that was new information. Okay. It does not change my vote. Okay. Mr. Heath? No. Mr. Heath? Mr. Heath, first, I hope this way first. Uh, you know, I look at the alternatives. Alternatives are grim. We have the uh, Tremont Mail, and we have an office building that hasn't been attended to, so we don't you know how to navigate that. We turn around and look at Old Town Hall. Either we don't have Old Town Hall, or we're not going to have Old Town Hall. When it happens, somebody put the money to keep it up. I think we're obligated to do that. I have enough buildings that are falling down in this town that it, it's reaching the point of being desperate. So until somebody shows me a better alternative, the uh, proposal goes by to spend money to either maintain, upkeep, or hold the status quo. It's hard to say that I'm not in favor. Okay. Okay. 
that's fair enough. All right. So and this, the yes. Also new information. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, one of the problems with historical preservation is it dramatically increases the cost of maintaining the building. Mm -hmm. Right. And part of the basis for putting this under historical preservation was the fact that it was part of the historical district. Mm -hmm. All right, and we believe that the, not this last selective meeting, but the prior selective meeting that was raised, that the historical district that was passed by town meeting was never registered and it's on no deeds. So we don't have a historical district. Oh. Boy, that's super. Wow. Uh, so my understanding also was the fact that WCTV at one point was prepared to paint the building and sold it. They couldn't because it was part of the historical district. All right. So this is a legal council now. The select are trying to resolve this situation as quickly as possible because there's several other people that are involved in this. Right. So this is a legal council now. The select are trying to resolve this situation as several other people that are involved in this. Right. As far as what they could and could not do with their properties. But it appeared, since it was happened, I guess, was that. Um, during the course of discovery, it was determined that nothing was ever registered with Plymouth County, nothing was ever put under deeds. The historical district is in question. Jesus Christ. Is in question or is blown up? It it's in question as to whether or not it exists. It's not recorded. It's not recorded. It's like not having any you know, right. We also have problems like the Swift Beef where the deed restriction has never been put in there. It, right. a, it does have the ramification of if, if, if the it's not historical and the buildings can be repaired, the building can remain looking exactly like it is, but they can, can be painted with somebody else's money other than the town's or the, you know, the CPC's money. Okay. Just a little bit of clarification there, but then I probably need more information. Recording historical district, you don't necessarily record restrictions on deeds in a case like that, on individual deeds. That would be more to a zoning matter. I understand that. They, they, okay. went, they went to... But the, they, do, front, they must put it on a historic point. register, at least at the state, and that's where I get into muddy waters, because I don't understand it's where it goes to the state, registered. but it's not a county recording requirement, okay. per se. I understand. It has not been registered. Not been that's registered. the problem. Okay. No, you know, the people that are involved would love to have been, they would love to have final resolution legally to say it was, but that was announced at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. It is in the hands of town council to get a final determination in the state. Okay. All right. Just something real quick. That, that historic district was actually runs all the way down almost to the center of town, correct? Because well, the reason why I'm saying Frank is right, after we had the fire in our building, we had to tear it down. People said, well, you have to go to the historical society and everything. But the building that we lost in the fire was built in 1790, yet it wasn't historically registered. Mm. And it should have been. Mm -hmm. We're never taking it down, but it shouldn't have been. Okay. All right. Uh I don't have anything else other than oh, no. Derek. And he's really holding us up. Well, somebody else want to try? Because I, I can't walk in that meeting. It'll be a I'll go it's, it's, it's a conflict of interest for me to walk in that meeting. Well, back down down in the Cranberry Cafe, well, down the hall, take a right. Well, 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 going back to Larry's question, <laughs> should we be giving CPC or recommending the nod that they should spend $50,000 to, to historically preserve the building? But it's really not in our best interest at this point. It's well, in that classification because of the cost of the maintenance of it. I think we ought to revote that whole thing. Well, I wouldn't know this in that case. It's still a town building. There, there's a difference there. It's still a town owned building. So we still have an obligation to. But whether you can walk into Sherwood Williams <coughs> and get the paint and paint it rather than spend $70,000 or whatever the damn thing is expended. Well, <coughs> my chair, if I may, it's a question of the cost of maintenance and where the money comes from and the future restrictions. Remember, historical restrictions will, in fact, uh, create problems for anyone else who moves into the building as a town. It, the fact of life. Does, okay. Just to, just to carry that <coughs> one for further, if I may, there has been a discussion by WCTV. If it did not have the historical restrictions on it, they might be interested in buying the building and adjusting it to better suit their needs going in the future. So it opens up a lot. I'm sorry, I think I'm confused. 
Uh, well, then let's make a motion. Hold on. Someone <laughs> is talking. We have to do this. Yes. Uh, okay. I don't believe this article says that they're going to put a historical restriction on the building. We all uh, assume there was one. We always assumed that there was one? Yes. 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 We did. Oh, okay. It's in the historical. Yeah. We did. Under, under the category of historical preservation. Okay. Yeah, why do you Mr. McDonald. They might not be able to do it. Ms. Ms. Please. Marilyn first. Oh. Sorry. Um, I think that before we do anything on this end of it, we should hear what the possible resolution is. I think those people who have lived in historic districts or have experience with it understand the difficulty, especially for private homeowners trying to do work. I said they're a little green a few minutes. Pick colors, do landscaping. I mean, you really give up a lot of control on your property. Um, on the other hand, it is one of those things that just makes towns more valuable because they look cute. Um, it's open to debate. It protects some of the integrity, some of the character of the town. And that is why the historic district was created in the first place. Now, whether it was properly implemented or not, that's a different issue. But we have basis of thinking there is a historic district. And if there's going to be a fix on that, a way to correct the improper or lack of registration, then I think we should find out where that's going yeah. first before we okay. get the cart before the horse. And go ahead, Mr. Keith. I, I fully agree with the reasons why you might want to hold out to something and make it look cute, et cetera. But there's also the question of what CPC funds could be spent on. They're using, they want to use historical preservation money for on a building that the premise that they were doing with originally appears to have changed. What we don't want to get into is a situation where we spend the money and we authorize them to spend it, they spend it, all right, and then we find out that the money has to be refunded. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Now, do you have something to say, you two gentlemen? Either one? I think you pretty much said it. I, okay. I, I think, if, if, in my opinion, we should reopen the article, and I think we should abstain until we have more information because to vote favorable and go to town meeting and, and may we may not be favorable because it says right in here under the category of historic preservation right in the article. Okay, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to let you go, Dave. Go ahead. I think that the conversation needs to be done in the context of Article Twenty, and therefore I'm going to move for reconsideration of Article Twenty. Second. Discussion question. Second for discussion purposes, sorry. Yeah. Okay, Marilyn, I'm going to let you speak on that. I, I, I do, just do that one little comment. And, and I'm only going to address just the, the um, technical way that we're going to go through this. If we're going to reconsider this motion, I would suggest that perhaps we could wait for reconsideration. Are we going to have a meeting before? Oh, is the FinCon going to meet before town meeting? We'll call a meeting. And if it's necessary, we will we will be there an hour an hour before. All right. So we could do final vote final votes for things that we don't have members for. Rather, we could do a reconsideration then and bring it to the yes, floor if we have further information. If we don't reconsider it now, or if, we, if this the vote that we take right now it will go into the published warrant. That's right. Okay. And I, I just need to. I, I'd like to make one comment. If you would indulge me. Um, this, what's happened, what, what's obviously happened with this building has happened with several former CPC projects. They, 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 they have brought them to, to the town meeting, we voted, we've done this and we've done that, but they have failed to register. Maybe they didn't know how, or they didn't know how to ask for help, I don't know what the issue was. But I'm, I'm, this isn't something that I'm surprised in hearing at all. Go ahead, David. From my perspective, we should vote on it at this point because enough doubt has been raised whether it's in the historical district or not. If it is not in the historical district, the premise of this is incorrect. And that makes this faulty. So the you explanation can simply be at this point that there is questions of whether the old town hall is actually in the preservation, historic preservation area and registered as such or not. 
But that explanation should be put in front of the town. I wouldn't want to wait until the night before town meeting. I won't be there. Of course, uh, you never are. <laughs> I won't be there either. But the, the point is, uh, we owe it to town meeting to say that there's a question regarding this article. Yes, Marilyn? We owe it to the citizens of this town to get that building painted. That has been an eyesore for years. How long have we been talking about getting it done? The tenant can't paint it because it's in the historic district. The town can't paint it because it doesn't have the money. We now have a way of funding for it. And I, I will take exception to what you commented on CPC. This is a very different situation. CPC is not involved with the historic district necessarily. Okay. I, I would defend them that this proposal was brought forward to them under the auspices of being historic, and I would be very concerned about any money that CPC has put forth ever in that area if we don't have a registered historic district. So this is a bigger issue that needs to get resolved. This is just uh, fifty thousand dollars that we're looking at, but what other funds have been expended um, if that isn't recognized? And I don't want to say Tremont Nail because that scares me as the ramifications of that. But well, so we have a problem here. A much bigger problem than $50,000 painting a building. So I'm of the opinion that paint the building, make it look good. And, and well, unless, unless there's any new information on this, a, vote, uh, a motion has been made to reconsider the vote for Article Number 20. Okay. Can I say one more thing? And I won't be combative. Is it new? Yeah, I, I, okay. it's not really so much new as it is, look, if there is a doubt, I think we abstain until we have the information. Otherwise, we're going to town meeting with a vote that says we, we, we like this article and we may not like it in the end. And I, and I, take, I take a little bit of a fence to comment that no one else is going to paint it because WCTV offered to paint it. So it's not like someone else that is not going to paint it. It was, it, 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 they've offered to do it. So it's, it would, I, I'm not trying to be mean to CPC. I, I really think if this is the case and it works out this way, that's great. Mm -hmm. But if it isn't, then we got an issue. Bonnie, um, I'm trying to look at the bigger picture here. Um, if, and if, if you are a private citizen and you have a historical home, because we've had this happen, this happened downtown to a building that's not in a historical district, okay? But it was had historical value and they were a private citizen, presented a grant to the CPC, their grant was accepted, it went to town meeting floor, okay? So I don't think it's an issue of whether this particular building sits in the historic district or whether there is an established historic district. They are expending money for historical preservation, okay? Um, so I don't see really where the greater picture of the establishment of the historic district really matters in this particular case. Yeah, it obviously needs to get resolved before we go around advertising that we have a historic district if we don't, okay? But as Marilyn stated, the town doesn't have the money to fix it. It's painted. Okay? The municipal maintenance doesn't have the money to fix it. Municipal maintenance went to CPC to find these funds. Okay? Mm -hmm. I happen to be a very big advocate that if we have buildings um, that need these sorts of repairs that fall under CPC guidelines, we ought to use the money for our own benefit. I have said that about Town Hall more than one time. Um, so it, it, to, you, if you have wished to reconsider, I will tell you, you know, it does not change my vote one way or the other. Okay, unless there's anything new, what, there's, a, there's, a, there's a motion and there's a second on the table. If someone has something new, I'll hear it. Otherwise, we're going to move forward with this and, and take a vote. All those in favor of reconsidering Article 20, vote aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. Got a tie vote. Hmm. Tie vote on a reconsideration? Fails. 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 Okay. All right. So it stays as previously voted, correct, Madam Chair? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to any other issues here so that we can we can't we can't vote. Um, I, I, I'm, 
I don't know if the board's so... Does it come from? He yeah. should be done Three in a few minutes. minutes. Yes. There shouldn't be much going on there. Sorry. Yeah, but he's yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Dominic went down. Just run in. They said they'd let him use a few on. minutes. Hold on. You can really have all of these sandwich. Okay. As we go through everything, we have to look at all right, what the legal basis is. Not what we want it to be. Not what we think it should be. Not what we think the most common sense is. We need to look at the legal basis. What is the legal basis? This last issue that we just talked about, my category is in the same category as the twin bill. One, we determined what we understood to be the law based on Thompson. The other, that has been risen by the Board of Selectmen, as being a, potential problem, a serious potential problem, far beyond this building. We, thought, we cannot vote in this committee based on general opinion, we're supposed to be putting the facts in front of the town. Not feel goods, not what want to, not what we think is nice. Okay? And when it comes down to that there's inaccurate information at any given time, we can vote right up until five minutes before the meeting. All right. And now we're going to issue a written report saying that we recommend something. That there may be no legal basis to I understand what you're saying, and you're absolutely right. I, according, I, 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 we're, here, we, here we are, we're sitting doing the wrong thing. I, no, I'm just saying, it's, you know what, we did the right thing when we voted on it. When it was brought to our attention that there, there could be a major problem. Could be. Could be, exactly. Well, thank you. No, it proved it to me, so exactly. I voted on it without proof. Okay, all right. Sorry. Go ahead, Marilyn. So nothing. You two? Did you have anything further? That's all I said. I didn't, I didn't prove to me that we were doing wrong. Okay. The, the question, excuse me, Don, I should say something. The question becomes historic preservation and what the qualifications of that as opposed to historic district. I am certainly willing to consider a motion for reconsideration the night of our, our town meeting if we get for, further clarification. But I thought we were being hasty to jump on this with the questions that we still have. Madam Chair, well, the only thing we were trying to consider was whether to postpone the decision until just before the meeting. We have now printed our public vote. It would be very good. You know, we can change it that night, but the impression will already be made and published. I, I'll be quiet for a second. Okay. All right. Moving on to Article 1, Mr. Sullivan. Excuse the delay. I appreciate it. The Council on Aging meets at the same time, and I had to go over some items with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm handing out. The, uh, the backup, which would be the first part, would be the cover sheet. The second page, as it is front to back, has the Article 1 transfer list. The third page is the Article 2 capital plan list. And then the third page is actually the debt service schedule that we received from Bond Council on that to give you an idea of what it would look like. Uh, just to Give everybody a heads up. The first payment that bond council would have this year would be fiscal year 14 on the uh, if we borrow for the capital plan. Okay, so, but, so it would be um, in year 14. Yes, fiscal year 14. Uh, we can get back to that. I'm going to turn to the page number two on there and. This is different than what was given before. I think I gave a fair warning on that. Uh, so let's run down them. The first column is where it was coming from. The second, what funds are available after the amount's been transferred out. The transfer amount needed is the third column. And then the fourth is where it's transferred to. Uh, there's the, the first one is the salary for the IT department. For the assistant, I believe we've gone over that information. Mm -hmm. The second is the Council on Aging Salary for a position in there. Uh, there's, there was a question as to why we need this, and uh, it sort of goes hand in hand with my meeting with the Council on Aging before. We've got some very good news in that the Gatcher service is expanding to have Saturday hours, 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., 
and also weekday hours up to 5.30 p.m. We've never been able to do that because the staffing out of our Council on Aging have done it. Their hours are 8 till 4. They do not work Saturday. So to get better services for our seniors and those who would use these services, we will no longer be managing the GATRA grant. GATRA will put that out to a contractor who has professional uh, dispatchers. Uh, I believe part of the bid, I, I haven't seen it, so I can't be sure, will be to offer positions to our drivers and such. However, one of the positions in there is uh, if the dispatcher is somebody that's been doing a lot of the bookkeeping and such work in the council on age. There's going to be nobody capable of doing that once that transition occurs. I'm going to need to have a position in there to do that. Um, there's, some, there's some benefits financially to the town as well for this change. I know it's a little bit off the, off the beaten path, but the drivers were in part of the Plymouth County retirement system, so we will no longer have seven people in the Plymouth County retirement system. Uh, this position obviously will, will be a full benefits position. There will be uh, health benefits applied to that as well. Worst case scenario is the family plan, to, to say it in a bad way, but I don't have the exact figures to tell you that they're offsetting each other completely, but I need a position in there. We are reducing our, our pension liabilities, so I believe it's being left. The next one is the inspectional services, professional services account. And this might be broken down in a confusing manner. The first part, I used all the available state aid. And then the second part is from departmental budgets on there. You can probably see the difference. So the first 12500 again, we're still trying to make up for the extra costs we had on the 118 Sandwich Road project. And uh, we pay our are what do you call the, the alternates that come in, alternate inspectors and such out of that line as well. So if that line's completely depleted, we are in trouble on that. We would, we would be in a bad situation. So that's the first 12,500. If you skip down to the second part, you'll see we'll be moving from inspectional services salary, another 12,500 to the inspectional services, professional services line. So it's a total of 25,000 that we'll be putting into the inspectional services, professional services line. Another reason for that is we have hired a vendor as our building inspector to make sure things can go forward to the zoning board. And so that building can occur in our town. Something that we've not been able to do. Uh, approximately all these transfers I would give a value of that as $5,000. We also know during the time that we do not have a director of inspectional services, the full-time one, the, we are saving on the salary. So I feel that uh, you would think we, at what we had budgeted for a little over $80,000, we make this up, the, the $5,000 up in several weeks. So that would be the inspectional services. Correct. Um, are we adding to inspectional services staff? We got a new uh, employee count in that area. As we a result do not. Of this? We do not. So why are we twenty five thousand dollars under budget? During the one eighteen Sandwich Road, there was, was thirty grand. Yeah. Was thirty grand, and that's under the professional services on there. However, that basically wiped that entire account out. We had also set aside $10,000 for that. That was not able to be brought over because the company that ended up doing the work was not the original company, and the amounts encumbered in fiscal year 12 could not be brought forward to 13 then. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The next one is the Cemetery Perpetual Care account. In 2011, Simply, 
Well, I'll, I'll applaud you for always asking what's in the account because we didn't have enough money in the account and we voted it out of there. This is to make that account whole again. So we would move $17,500 into that account. Can I ask him? Yeah. I know, I actually went back to 2011 and saw the article on town meeting when I was doing the research for the other one that it, and I was looking at it going, oops. And, and so that was, uh, so do we know the balance, interest, and principal of that count now? Right now, the, the full balance of that account is negative 17,000. 400 and change. So we have no interest at all to speak of. Correct. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So that would make that line whole. We've also asked uh, our auditors and the state, how do you deal with this? Although it's compared to our whole budget, a minor amount, it's also an issue. It's not something that should have happened. Very good. So we're trying to transfer at this fall town meeting to make that whole, and we should be able to basically be okay on that one. Okay. That was Article 24. Okay. The next is the legal services line for 20,000. That has not changed from the last time you've seen it. So we go down. The next one is workers' compensation. Uh, the amount that we have in there was budgeted um, at 200 and, and excuse me for not having this in front of me, but approximately $285,000. Well, actually, between the workers' compensation and the general liability, we have exactly the right amount. That's fine. However, Workers' compensation was sixty-one thousand more. We have a check. That we have workers' compensation for the town and the school that's covered by Maya. However, Maya does not cover our police workers' compensation, which comes in at an extra sixty-one thousand dollars. So, that was not properly budgeted for in there. Now we have over $60,000 in excess funds in our general liability insurance. If you know, there's notice there's two lines, the general liability and the workers' comp as well. So I would like to leave $30,000 in the general liability for any claims on there, so that if we have claims, we have enough to pay the deductible and such. I could just wipe it out and make it fine, but again, will be coming for transfers in the future. So the first part of this is to move $33,000 from available, excuse me, $30,000 from available funds into the workers' compensation line. The second part of that is to move from general liability insurance, $31,000, to the workers' compensation line. So that's a total of $61,000. Yes. Push a little bit. Uh, Derek, going back to um, instructional services, the professional service, and that um, sandwich road project, don't, is, didn't we budget like $40,000 to take down buildings? Is, is, can we take any money out of that to, for, for the takedown of that property or the clean up of that property? The demolition line is what, what you're thinking about okay. on there. And that was used? And and that has been, that's part of what's been used. However, when they did the accounts this year, uh, the demolition line was put together with professional services. So now, whatever's being paid out of there is under the simple line of professional services. And that was spent. And we won't have enough. Okay, so I want to know if that fund was, if that line was used. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have any questions about this? No. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm comparing what your original draft was to compare it to what you gave us there. Is there a reason why you had audit here for ten thousand? We were all set with that, no? The uh, no. There's two things on there. We're not all set with audit. We're not all set with FICA. However, if we don't pay these guys. These are the ones that would go into deficit now. I do not have free cash to look at to be able to take numbers out of there. 
So in other words, FICA usually would not we would not have an issue until May on there because at the end of the year the school pays out basically three months worth of salary, which is our single bill, biggest bill, which I believe was fifty three thousand dollars last year. Uh, the audit as well won't be done until starting into April. So I do believe that we need to pay those. However, these are the ones that we need to pay now. And I don't have any additional funds to cover the other. And I don't know what the free cash is going to be on there. So it would be my, my hope, I should say on there, that when we have free cash in the spring special town meeting, that's when we could solve this issue. Okay. Um, do you want to yes. Do you want to vote on one first yes. before we move on? I entertain a motion to vote on article number one. I make a motion to vote on budget amendments as listed on the report from the interim town administrator. Second. No, no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain? Okay. Go on to article number two. Was that seven or eight? Eight. eight. What? Eight zero zero. Oh. Article number two, which is on page three, which unfortunately listed page one on there as they're all different documents, so excuse that. Mm -hmm. The I believe the only, there's two changes you should see from the last one. I should not say only. The first one is vehicles, board of, board of health, municipal maintenance, and then there's a combination of the assessor slash conservation vehicle. Um, I would like for them each to have one, but it looks like 46,000 would be what I would put in there. So we would have three vehicles purchased. Uh, would be my thought is used vehicles we asked bond council can you bond for used vehicles they said if the useful life and if we will sign off on the useful life being greater than five years then they will bond for that so it would be approximately fifteen thousand dollars per vehicle and also a thousand dollars to outfit them if you will if it has to have a uh, yellow light on there or maybe just the decals I would hope that we don't spend that much but should be available did you go ahead and get a, 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 a whatever auctioneer's license or whatever you need to know with that tie you really do you probably yeah. do pretty well yeah. <laughs> honest Derek's auctions aren't coming anytime <laughs> soon apparently <laughs> Okay. Anybody have any? Uh, can you explain a little more about the defibrillators for the police. Is how many is that? Yep. For the police. Yeah, yeah. Yes. That's the second change. Oh, do we want to just stop at the top and uh, <laughs> let's just let me jump. work down to the good news? Okay. <laughs> but yes, that's the other change. Is the defibrillators uh, that would have changed? That's going to combine take away from two things. It was the library carpeting. And then part of that would have been for the other vehicle movement when we moved from four vehicles to three. This would be for 20 defibrillators on there. Uh, that would be one for each vehicle. It's not the 40 that's been requested. And if I said, I have this money available to do this. The option is either to take them, yes or no. And the answer was yes on this round. Can I ask a question? Was the capital planning on board with this? Uh, that was my question. Thank you. They have not voted on that to be the one. Beforehand, we had spoken about defibrillators for the police at a lesser amount, approximately $25,000. Mm -hmm. uh, but at that amount, the, the option was yes or no. And that was a no. The only reason I come back with this one is, and this may be a more, if I'm being open on it, it may be more of the emotional from last night speaking about some way that I'd use this equipment. So uh, there's 20 available. It's going to be up to the body to say yes or no on it. Okay. 
I think I'll also answer your question. I mean, there was extensive discussion in capital planning, and the, pretty much the consensus of the members, um, with the exception of the town administrator, <laughs> who wasn't sure, right? Because his number probably would be more like 12, is what they would recommend. Uh, 20 is going to be a hard sell to them, but there's a general agreement that the town administrators call us to when to town meeting. To give the, if I may, mm -hmm. the simplest of explanation on the 20 number is one for each vehicle. Okay. Now I understand how many vehicles per shift, who's using them and stuff, but that's the simplest explanation on that. Why, why do we need 20? I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just curious, are you saying that 20 of them that are in the, in the cars now are not working? Is that what you're saying? As of, I believe it was, is it this January? This January, I believe that they are the ones that we have in there are obsolete. Now, it doesn't mean they won't work. It's just That's like anything we have. They, they may work, and they may work perfectly. And, and if they don't work, uh, liability. what's our liability? Oh. I understand what you're saying. But I do understand that the, the, the argument that the chief made about the muscle power is totally ridiculous. I mean, I don't understand why we couldn't have at least gone with the capital planning recommended with 12 and then update them next year. I mean, it's a matter of ka-ping, 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 and on. That's all it is. It doesn't matter which one you're using. There's no muscle power involved. And I just think that in, in the times that we have, that we're in right now, I, I think, I, I wish you had listened to capital planning. Go ahead. Will we be voting on this? We at town meeting. Is the intent to vote on this as a package deal, all or nothing, or are these going to be a la carte? I would have it as all or nothing, but the moderator is going to be the they final be, answer on that. There can be amendments that. made on it. Yeah. Okay. You're willing to put, take a chance Let on me. this whole article? Go ahead. If that's how many vehicles we have, and they're going to be out of date, then we're going to spend the money eventually. I, I was under the impression that we were going to try to phase them into expenses. That was my understanding, but obviously we have such a tight budget, and I certainly don't want to send our police force out with the few letters that may or may not work. So, uh, you know what, if this is the compromise, if you will, uh, I'm okay with that. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead John. You know, you, you put the price of someone's life, but the thing I'm getting at is liability. If they have to shuffle these around from vehicle to vehicle, people forget. People get in a rush, people get busy. Now they take a car that doesn't have one, they think they have one, they show up. Unfortunately, someone passes. Uh, you, you're putting money on people's lives and 41 grand to save lives. You save one life and, and you oh, you spent, saved your money. Go ahead, Brian. Um, two things. Uh, I, would, I hope that since the problem with the other defibrillators, um, the link up to the ones that the EMS has as a situation, we are now hopefully going to get into a, a grant program to get the ones for the EMS. I hope these all work in conjunction together. Somebody thought ahead on that. That's just my comment on that. My other thing is that um, 20 seems like a good number if you're doing one for every car. But I do have a question. I remember we originally discussed these defibrillators. Um, to classify them as a capital item, they had to be an entire replacement mm -hmm. of the system. Okay, so I don't know whether saying you're going to do ten and then and then ten next year or whatever. I'm I'm not legal on this, or whether that can classifies as capital. Okay, so that's maybe a selling point one way or the other as to the number of twenty necessity. Go ahead, Larry. Because it's the the obviously it's forty one thousand dollars. If we bought them individually, they wouldn't qualify. I believe they would be expense items. But to buy them as a group, that would qualify them because it's a program. I believe at that point it becomes a program, which is capital, which can be clock. I'm I'm pretty sure on this, and mm -hmm. so that's where we're at. And and I'm I'm with you on that. It's it's 20 units is 
not 40 units. So, Thomas, you did something you said? Uh, I, what, what happens if we had zero in the cars? And what's our liability then? That's a human cost issue, not a liability issue. Pardon me? I mean, the guy, they drive up, there's no, they don't have the equipment. So it, just, it isn't a matter of thing works or not. No. And how, I w what I would really like to know is how often these get used. Well, only it's, once is enough. They say someone to steal the money? Only once is enough. Did you see that on the news? Wednesday. That guy the Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday, September 26th, they saved a, a woman's life using yeah. it. They were the first responders. She had no pulse. And they were using CPR and the AED to bring her back. Yep. Not one of the new ones either. No. It's not from plastic. I'm listening to an argument that uh, one, we need for X number of vehicles going on patrol, and then we need X for all the vehicles. And if you only put in the number of people going on patrol, they might forget it. What a shame. I'd be like telling me a police officer forgot his radio, his pistol, his shotgun, and his keys to his, his car. If it's something you're supposed to transfer, you're supposed to have with you, it's a piece of equipment, then it's supposed to be with the officer. It's not a question of being forgotten. So that, that argument of, well, the guy <coughs> forgot it, doesn't cut it. Because he's supposed to have his equipment as a total functioning unit when that cruiser rolls. Okay. Hey, yes, also, yes. One of the members of the Capital Planning Committee is a, was responsible for an EMS unit in a neighboring town, right? And he is the one who's repeated and said it can be transferred from shift person to shift person because that town did it, right? Um, and he's also aware of the equipment. I mean, you can listen to him talk and he's prepared to come for a town meeting for less. There's also been some confusion as to the price of these things. It's going somewhere it's range from twenty one hundred to twelve hundred. So I'm not gonna get hung up on that, but um, we may hear a very strong argument against this at town meeting floor as well as at Capital Plan. Uh, mm -hmm. based on his experience, all right, as the head of the EM and the EMS section. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I may, at the at the end of the day, this is only the recommendation through the article. It's going to be up to the body. They can amend it to change it, whatever they want to do on there. They can either vote for the before it, against it. Um, this is bringing forth to it. I, I would think that you might give some credit for knocking it from eighty thousand down to forty, but. <laughs> <laughs> Could we do that just by changing the price? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. You want to you want to go further down the list of school buses? Yeah, the school buses are the same amount. The school roof repair is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, library windows and doors repair the same. Uh, defibrillators have gone over. And I I'm actually not recalling the town hall security upgrades. Do you have the uh, other one on there is that the same? That was the, the same, same yeah. Mm -hmm. It was just the change of the defibrillators to the library carpet. Uh, okay. Yeah, the vehicle dropping one vehicle. Out. I'll um, entertain a motion to vote on Article 2. I'll have uh, a motion for favorable action on Article 2 as written in the handout. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Oh. Okay, so we got seven zero one. No, no, no. no. no we got four one zero. I'm sorry. No, four one two. Four one two. No, we're still missing somebody. Five one two. I'm just saying. Okay, so five one three. No, you're abstaining. Yes, I am. So four one three. Four one three. Four one three. All right, that's the number right sooner or later. Four one three. I had eight in my head, and I was just working back. Trying to work it right. <laughs> Who's writing that one up? Because I'm not. Still be with the email. What do you like, Frank? Okay. And you want two sides to that? We got four to one to three. There's no negative, but you want to explain the abstentions? Does somebody want a minority? It was the one. Tom voted against it. Tom voted against it? Yep. I did. Mm -hmm. Do you, you want to write a minority? Unless you want to. Well, I voted for the against it because of 
the school bus, um, the defibrillators, and the school roof repair is being broken up, broken out for uh, Article 7, I believe, as well. Well, they're going to withdraw Article 7. If this gets called first and it gets passed, they're going to withdraw Article 7. They did not know at the time that they put it in, the school department did not know that it was going to be included in but my whole thing on the school on the school roof repair is that it should be a town maintenance item, and the school should worry about teaching the students and not preparing them, having to repair the roof. So I like the money out of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Any other issues? Okay. We're gonna move on to the article three of the. Yeah, article three is the uh, is the funding of which the debt service, and again the plan had been to not fund as much of the stabilization in FY thirteen to cover the cost of the first payment on there. Um, you actually you don't need to do that. Well, you part of that how to pay for this is really going to come up with an FY fourteen budget. Uh, during the budget process, and part of that could be if uh, we're annually putting $150,000 into our stabilization fund, then putting approximately $75,000 in that for FY14. But the expense of this will go under the debt service line. Uh, if you look at this, it would be again, it would be a five year bond, 2.5% uh, interest rate. And this is one of the state house loans. Anybody have any questions on this? With Marilyn? So when the motion is actually made, are we going to delete that? Um, are we not going to transfer some of the money from the stabilization fund? Correct. Okay. Well, do we have to go ahead. I'm not sure. yes. uh, so we'll have to make that amendment on the floor or will that already be made? I think we may even, um, as part of Article 2, we're looking at it, we may even be able to buy, we're just having the everybody vote to accept the program as to the funding of it would be based off of FY14, so we may even be able to delete Article 3, not have to act on it, if we can get, the, get Article 2 passed. Uh, on there, I just want to we're verifying that with the moderator as to the proper so procedure on there. To clarify, so if we vote Article Two favorably, those funds don't come into play to FY14, so right. we don't need to worry about it. So we don't need to fund it. And this, the the fall town meeting is all FY13 in action. Okay. So Thank that's you. my my answer to you is, you, I know you're trying to vote on it, so I apologize for the vagueness on it, but. I, uh, it may not be necessary. Any other questions? David? Um, you've got a school bus in there on the capital plan. And I'm looking down the road at this, and this is a five year program. Um, where do we go on the question? Uh, in my But it's entirely possible that could be proposed to, and to be on there. So um, it, it's, it's possible that there's the, the fleet would be privatized, and maybe we have some sort of information on that. They don't end up purchasing the bus out of this, and you know, you vote that out at the town meeting. So, um, just my time is not going to concern the world. When we start down this phone road, if you keep on doing it each and every year, and let's say it was, uh, if you're bonding at fifty thousand dollars a year and it's for five years, if you think about it, at some point you're at a quarter million dollars before it would start shrinking down again if you didn't do anything else. So yes, you could uh, push your debt service up higher and higher, and it would be an untenable situation. Thank you. Just confirm. 
Yeah. Um, I just have a question. Where, what is our status at the um, with the funds that were to be restricted for um, capital use um, that went meals tax? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Anything else? The um, my understanding is that it, it's been brought forth to the. I'm going to be very untechnical in here, but the powers that be, and they are working on it. It's got a, it's got the, um, the, the um, bill number, I, I believe, on there. So it hasn't died. It should. I would imagine in fiscal or fiscal 13 that that would get would pass. So. Okay. Um, so if we pass this. This could obviously be something that's going towards the approximate 400. And, 16,000 I think that was my question. If that goes through, we would, we would it certainly be... Retroactive? Well, it originally was presented, it had a year number on it. When, when, but I don't think you can go back to, by the time it gets through, where it's going through, you certainly can't go back to two years or a year budget back for a fiscal year that's ended. We're, we're paying enough, and I'm sorry, if I'm, no, sorry go ahead. Uh, we're paying enough in capital items this year to cover uh, the, the 400000 on that. Okay. So. okay. Yes. Um, going back to the idea of not putting anything in the current budget for the payment or to service the first payment and putting it off to 14 is a bad practice. Uh, one of the reasons why it was done that way, we realized that the payment wouldn't come in 13. However, the money would fall to free cash, and then next year's revenues could be used against next year's expenses. We wouldn't be using a portion of that revenues against something we had done in the prior year. We didn't want to set up any, most people, I understand this in a situation where the bond doesn't have to be paid until in actually the next year. Yeah. However, postponing the payment like that is a slippery slope. Uh, very slippery slow. The other side is that the money would remain in stabilization and much harder to get money out of stabilization. All right, it's not like the reserve account. That's true. Okay, and time-wise, and we would have to go for time to take it out, but unless it was done as part of the budgeting process, it's still going to be a lot of problems. That's the reason why we said about all the free cash and do it that way. All right, because we're still making a contribution to the free cash. On the bus side, right, in the meeting today, something has arisen for the action committee. Oh, God, they actually did some action. <laughs> wow. There is the possibility of refurbishing some of the buses, uh, actually refurbishing the bodies, and being able to put a bus back on the road, basically in new condition. So, uh, some of them are saying 35,000. 35,000 is, uh, 30,000 is the base number, and then just transportation, et cetera. All right, that's being worked on very aggressively. Uh, the meeting was held this morning, the superintendent, I know, was going to try to talk to the town administrator mm -hmm. uh, before town meeting, so we have a better explanation to bring the town meeting. But even on capital planning, the 55000 was never designated to a bus. It was designated to doing something about the buses, mm -hmm. whether it was a lease payment, whether it was uh, to purchase uh, you know, vans or whatever the case was. Right, that's why I was putting it now. It looks like it could be enough money with an extra 5000 to refurbish the buses. So there's more to come, and everyone is aware of the urgency to do this before town meeting. Is this a national budget? Yes. So, should we, no, Madam Chair, should we vote on three? Um, go ahead. I had a question to a friend who was talking about the debt service. So, even though we don't have a payment due until 2014, you want to take the money, vote to take the money out of stabilization. Where do we put it? No, we don't take it out. No. What it is is we're going to transfer the appropriation. We're going to change it to 100000 to twenty-five. So we're still putting something in there. And the other seventy-five would go to debt service. That should come up short. All right, but then it's just going to transfer over into the next year for the first payment. Okay. Otherwise, you set up the press and every fall you come in, I'll buy, I'll buy a million dollars worth of stuff and I'm going to have to pay for it next year. That's when the bond comes due. You know, the idea is to really have the money set aside. This was set aside. <laughs> Yeah, Unless somebody spends some free cash when he's not supposed to. I was going to say that. I can't, can't claim free cash will be there. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, 
That amount he can do. <laughs> a question. If this capital plan gets modified on town floor, will that affect the bottom line number? How does that affect the bond? Is that, yeah, that's what I'm asking. Will that, in other words, if they modify the capital plan amount, does that automatically affect the bond amount? Or do they still get the same, just find something else to spend it on? Does anyone have an idea what happens if that happens? Uh, it, it really depends if they if they put in for uh, two two large copiers at ten thousand dollars maybe maybe we couldn't bond for that it's going to depend what the changes are going to be how drastic. Um, I mean, right they, I'm sorry, I didn't mean if they put something in, I mean if they took something out. Uh, if, if something out of the capital plan. Yeah, if they reduce the capital plan, you could you could have an higher higher interest rate on there if it's a smaller amount because of, for for whatever the size is. So, um, as you probably know, if you if you're looking at different levels of, of loans, sometimes you get a better discount for borrowing a higher amount. I understand that. I understand that. Somebody could go ahead and modify it to take the the defibrillator money yeah. out and put it all to the library. Correct. They could do that. They could very well do that. We would hope that there's, yeah, and then just have to be able to cover it through some yes. sort of project on there, which I'm you, sure. You know they're going to do something. Be able to do you know that. something's going to be done. Oh, what? Somebody's going to modify this. That's oh, absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. You're right. Absolutely. Madam Chair, in modify, we should try to stick to the 350 number. And, and what I would say about these numbers, with the exception of the data, is, mm. all right, um, these aren't what's needed in any of these areas. Right. Oh, no, Any one of these areas could be higher. Oh, no, I understand that. That's basically what I was getting. Basically, we could put it in buses, we could put it you know, into, yeah. into the, uh, the security my, and upgrades yeah. at the town hall. Maybe my question was wrong. What I was, actually, what I should have said was, Capital plan, we're going to plan to spend that amount no matter what. It's just yes. what they're going to use it for. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. how I should have said it. I'm and sorry. I think it's a little bit contingent upon us to make sure that we have the amount, something in mind. To make that amount. Thank you. Because what does happen, based on what the information Mr. Foster gave us, um, is that if we lower the amount of the borrowing, the increase, the rate, the interest rate goes up, goes up and we we'll spend more money in interest. That's so it makes no sense, right? So that's it makes no sense. sense. Yeah. So if you look at the issue of 350, we use 350 for interest and in principal, the 350 <coughs> to 312, didn't it? It was on there. You dropped the 312, as you said. Right? And okay. it was a lot of interest. Uh, <coughs> a lot of principal interest. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions before we go? Well, we're going to vote on 13 then, right? Three. I'm, I'm talking on three. three, sorry. I just I added the one. Just wanted to make sure you were here. I'm here. Okay. And no barring no further discussion. I'd like to get a motion to for oh. Article Three. I move that we I move Article Three Fund Capital Plan voted as presented in the handout. Are you moving favorable action? Moving favorable action, sorry. I'll second. All, those, I was in, removing this. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Tom? Abstentions? Abstentions? No. 7 1. 7 0. All right. No, seven one zero. Seven one zero. Now, I, I just think you guys are paying attention. Okay. Wait a second. Number eleven, I believe. No six. We didn't vote on six. All right. No, we have to do vote on number six. Oh, okay. That's right. Do you have anything further on Article Six, sir? That was at the McKinney Vent down. Yes, it is. Uh, I, I would just hesitate if they don't have the certified number back by Desi that. Um, that we don't, that the body doesn't vote favorably on that. Uh, I, I have no other issue with it. It's just, again, it's going to be a problem setting our tax rate. If we vote that money in and it's not certified, the DOR will not accept that. Thank you. So. And this, I, we amended our town floor to uh, uh, barring, you know, that we will approve whatever is a certified number? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Talk about delaying the vote. 
just before town meeting. This would seem to be an area of concern of the uh, town administrator. Uh, I recommend that you give serious consideration of waiting to the absolute last minute and seeing what the uh, town administrator has for recommendation rather than taking action at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else have one? So we can go in the warrant the same vote unavailable. You no, I don't like that. You don't like that? No. I mean, I listen to the You abstain from no information? If, if, we, if, we, if we go favorable action and abstain on, abstain on it, and specifically state in our recommendation the reason why is exactly what Derek said, mm -hmm. that without a certified number, we are risking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not the pro on that one. Um, it doesn't mean that at the, at the time of town meeting, uh, that we have a favorable number or we have a certified number, that certainly town meeting should, should consider it, okay? But our recommendation is that it do not have favorable action at this time without a certified number. And that's what I'm hearing now. Can we, can, is it possible to do if then? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I kind of, I see where you're going with this, but, but I would, People don't always listen at town meeting. They just read and say, well, that's 09. Well, okay, that's not in the favorable column. I'm not voting for it. Or, and I'm not saying that everybody does it, but I think that we prepare a recommendation based on either way. Seeing that Tom's doing it, it's not going to bother me anyways, but prepare, prepare one that either way and then base and vote when we have the information. If it doesn't come the night of town meeting, then we know which way we're going to vote. If it does come, then we know pretty much which way we're going to vote. So that way, we're not, I mean, I can see putting it in there, abstain, but I don't like to think that we're putting anything in there at this point. It's trying to make your life harder, Tom. There's, there's merit to both sides. Yeah. The, the fact is that the Finance Committee goes on record as abstaining. Most people, even if they don't read the article, can follow the numbers across and realize exactly. it's a major problem there. That uh, has been our way of saying that we have concerns. Mm -hmm. And it, it has a valid point because it puts the body on notice that the Finance Committee is not happy. Or not comfortable. Not comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. The other danger is if we vote favorable action in the positive and the town meeting suddenly decides, well, geez, the vote is 800 in favor, we should too. It puts us out of balance and puts us in a serious situation where they're setting our tax rate. Mm -hmm. This is a reimbursement. This is not a revenue. It's a reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And it's subject to audit. And mm -hmm. I think the latest estimate we heard was there was a possibility that that audit would not be completed until the spring. And that this article actually should come up in a special town meeting in the spring. That's, that's very yeah, true. So that's, that's the danger of mm -hmm. going and putting something favorable out there. I mm -hmm. think the extension is the wisest way to go. You can always go back to town meeting and if we can change our vote on town meeting. We're asking, I, and we could even say at that point why we changed it. I agree 100% with, with both my colleagues here. Anybody else have anything? I will entertain motion. I will move favorable action on article number six. Second. All those in favor? All those opposed? All those abstain? Mm -hmm. Can I abstain from abstaining? <laughs> no. Okay. I abstain. Okay. All right. Thank you. Coming down to Article 11. We had a question. If, is it legal to use funds from the Harbor and Beaches account to, to, for the maintenance on the beaches? I thought it had to be used in the waterways is what has been suggested to me. Now, I, I'd like to have a clarification. Can we in fact do this or we 
Madam Chair, I, I, this is sort of an old joke now, but the last time I gave a legal opinion to this board, the DOR trained us. So. <laughs> 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 He's learning. He is a fast learner. Hold on. You don't have anything else. Uh, Madam Chair, um, that question I think was the one I sent off to Mark Kipper and gave you a copy asking for a breakout. A month by month, what day it's been in July, August, yeah. September. Yeah. Uh, I have yet to receive I haven't either. I didn't see it. Uh, and it was one other issue I sent out to Mark Gifford, so I only assume that his receiving station was off the air. <laughs> Yes. There, there was an article just like this in the spring of this year. Thirty thousand from water to beach. I think this one. Oh, it wasn't there in the spring. Was it, it was. It, it might have made. It might have made its way to the warrant, but not in the time we for it. That was one of the ones that, that was pulled. Uh, that was pulled. It was, was it? supposed to go to this. Okay. It did not make it to the, the town meeting. Oh, any comments, Mr. Solomon? I picked up uh, late this afternoon from Mark here for what, what Dave is looking for. I guess it hasn't come to you yet. I believe the total dollar amount was sixty-one thousand dollars. Labor equipment stuff they have to do. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Through you, you to through you to that. So if it was sixty-one, so he needs this thirty to make up the difference. He actually, it shows he actually spent $61,000 on beaches and stuff to clean them. Okay. Yes. But I guess part of our concern was this $30,000 was for this year. And to find out what July, August, and September produced, so you could turn around and look at May, June. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to find ourselves right back at the bar in the spring looking for more money mm -hmm. to, to take care of May mm -hmm. so I don't think we have a satisfactory answer whether the 30000 would be enough or is not what we can afford at this point. Mr. McDonald. Just in time. Actually, the language that we're referring to, it is vague enough to where it could be used for beaches. It's vague. It's vague enough to where it could be used for beaches. The problem I have is last year we didn't do this. Am I correct? It was pulled, right? It was pulled last year. It was pulled in the spring. So my question is, why was it pulled? Because the current town administrator felt to pull it. He pulled a couple of things. Well, that's that's nice, but that doesn't help us with deciding. And, and, and granted that... Do you want the, to call him up and ask him? Um, hey, I'm not you, far you from know, where he's at. Did he only pull it for financial reasons, the 30000 Oh, okay. I, I honestly don't okay. I guess my, my, my point in the whole thing is look, like, they have to clean the beaches. So. Well, no, uh, I'm just saying that that's why we had, we had a question whether this was legal to use it or not. I mean, you want us to go for the DOR again? I mean, it, no, I, we did, because we did something wrong? I, I mean, I, I, I'm not having a problem with this. I just want to bring it to people's attention that it, it is very bad. It is. It's vague, but it says it can be. But but it is vague enough to where it could be used. I, I and I and I was under the impression from last meeting that Gary was now on. Uh, excuse me, the the harbor master was on board with this. That's what Mr. Gifford said. I have yet to speak to the harbor. Well, I always like that when someone else speaks for someone else yes. and says they're on, on. But my point is, there it's. So are they going to stop cleaning the beaches because they don't have the money? And if they do, then we got a bigger problem. And that's something that may be. Mr. Heath, can I ask you? Excuse me. Go ahead. You know, we have a piece of equipment that sifts out the seaweed and everything else. <coughs> we put down there, cleans out the trash cans and that piece of stuff. Um, the municipal maintenance is doing beach maintenance. Uh, I think if we go back again to the question of what's our alternative. You know, we have a very nice set of beaches. We need to have clean. Trash needs to be picked up. You know, we say that we want to be a community that deals with tourism and people feel welcome to come down there. And so 
give me an alternative if you're not funding it. it. It's not the point. The point is that it's, it's specifically designated for the waterways, not the beaches. So that's all I'm bringing to people's attention. And do you have anything to add to that? I'm sure you've researched it. Yeah, the operative word is fun. Okay. Okay. It's not when I'm talking about coming out of the general funds, we're talking about coming out of the very specific funds. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and I'm not sure what the source of those funds are, and I think that's the, the problem that the Harbor Master was coming up with, is that um, the fund may not be available. Um, it, it sounds like there's some the ambi ambiguity there. Mm -hmm. Again, council would have to be consulted to make sure that we could do it, otherwise we'd be in training again. <clears throat> yes, Don't I don't know if this makes any sense or not, but to improve the waterways, like they would said, trash and everything on the beach, tide comes in and out, pollutes the waterways. I mean, I, I can see where you can make an argument that it, it's one and the other, it's one and the same. Yeah, How has this been funded in the past? I mean, it's been funded just like, just like it is. This article's come up, we've seen it years and years and years. So, this isn't the first time. So it's I think so I think okay the real question is: Is the harbor master comfortable with giving up these resources to the maintenance department? That was the issue we had last week. You had a discussion with him, and Mark said it was yeah. he was the harbor master was on board. That's exactly what. Mark and that's why we voted the way we or we discussed. We, we didn't vote anything. No, no, we're yeah. up to the. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it right here. So go ahead, David. So we're right back with the, the situation. Yes. Yeah, we've done it in the past, but we're not sure that what we've done in the past is correct. Would that, would that be a fair statement? That's fair, very fair. Okay, so then we need to be back into the same situation where we need to abstain to say that there's a problem. The explanation should be that council needs to give us a ruling of whether it's correct or correct. Dominic was right. If we were wrong, DOI would have already jumped on our throat. DOI has not, and this has been done this way in the past. If we were wrong, they would have said we, they, they looked at us with a fine tooth comb. He wasn't, he wasn't there. No? Okay. Am I wrong? You yeah. saying that? Okay, yeah. all right, then I'll, I'll take the statement back. Okay, it's only if somebody from the Finance Committee reports us to the DOI. All right, stop it all. I just didn't talk to them at all. <laughs> <laughs> I sit under the table and go, who? <laughs> I thought Mr. Paulson left this committee. He did. <laughs> He's still on record as being chair. Cool, go ahead. Um, I'm sorry, that through you to the interim town administrator. Derek, could you just clarify for us, um, because we didn't put in the count numbers there, and I appreciate that. There were three articles that were being asked to transfer money with regard to this. Yeah. And we went through it clearly the first night with the Harbor Master, and now I'm not sure which one this falls into. Um, article number eight. Money is coming from the waterways account to the Harbor Master's maintenance improvement. Yeah. Okay. Article 9 is coming from Harbor Services permits. Okay, so now on this article, it's coming from waterways. And waterways. Waterways. Yeah. waterways. Is that the same account? Is it the same fund as number 8? Yes. Okay, so that money goes into that account through boat excise taxes. That's how that account is funded. It's got $127,000. That's what he gets. Yeah, all right. Yeah. It's the other one is funded through through fees, but it, because it wasn't named the same, yeah. that's okay. that was a I had questioned that the first yeah. time it came out. So it's coming from the same place. So we have the money. We know we have the money in there. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of what we can do with it, and that goes to not having a greater plan. Well, you know, I would I would make a suggestion that uh, I well, go ahead. Larry. <laughs> I actually pulled up the Municipal Waterways Improvement Maintenance Fund, MGL, on it. And where, where it gets into the 60B under 1670, uh, may appropriate monies in said fund for one, maintenance, dredging, cleaning, improvement of harbors, inland waters, and great ponds and commonwealth, the public access thereto, which is the beach, beach. the breakwaters, retaining walls, piers, wharves, moorings thereof, and law enforcement and fire prevention. So th that's, and I went over this with the Harbor Master and I said, there's your, there's your, the public access there too is the beach. So it is it's it's legal. legally, it, I'm, I'm, I'm no lawyer, but I'm saying it's covered. This is, this is televised. He's saying it's covered. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's, he's covered. He's covered. 
get to go to the next well, DOI okay. meeting. Excuse me. Does anybody here disagree with that based on <laughs> no, what you I'm, just heard? I'm, I'm not so bad with it. You sing okay. alone. <laughs> I'll um, stay with you later. I'll, I'll, Thank you, Bob. I'll I'll sure. I got your back. Well, well that's a little scary. Not, now the two people right. argue with the most. What I'm not comfortable with is the fact that, as we pointed out, we keep stealing this money. We keep siphoning it off. There's money going into this account. We have a, a dedicated harbor master who has good plans for what needs to be done down there. This money should be coming from the general fund to properly fund our municipal maintenance budget. It shouldn't be coming out of this account. It should be going to do all those things that Mr. McDonald just read to us. We should sell the jet skis. That's what no, we here, here. Go ahead. We don't own them. <laughs> it should be coming from this account according to what Massachusetts General Law says. It can come from that account. We it have a it lot can of be used things. for that. That's what it said. So I'm not saying, look, I, I agree with you. I, I think that. We have a very, very dedicated harbor master, and if he wants to keep this money in his account, and, and also he mentioned that yeah. there comes a time when they have to do grants, and there's a matching process, and that matching money, we have to maintain a certain balance in order to match that, and that's where we left it, but Mass General Law says this, and now we hear from a second party, maybe, that he's okay with this. I, okay. okay. Barring any new discussion, any new facts. Any new facts? Frank's going to do. Let's have. A, let's uh, entertain a motion here. Motion. Unless anybody has any new facts, facts to to enlighten us with. Yes, Tom. The, the one fact we don't have and can get is a phone call to the harbor master and say, "Are you comfortable with this?" Okay. If I may, one fact we seem to be leaving out is when the harbor master was here two meetings ago to talk to us, um, he went on at a, a great length that the maintenance so improvement was, was for the pier and there are repairs to be done to the pier and the town's responsible. Now, I don't want to say in the past that we just looked at pools of money sitting around that were for future use and said, oh, look at that, we'll take that, put it over there and use it to here. All right, and that's what we're running into. That's why Article 8 is written the way it's written. Mm -hmm. So, hey, I hope the head might be just cleaned up, but I also know that access only has to be a pathway, which I hate to get into that kind of discussion, too. But it's true, all right? So, I think you'd have to get a clear understanding of what they were saying in that law, and you'd have to go from your opinion. Um, I think you're in danger again. Well, I don't think we have enough facts on this one. We're, we're trying to struggle with what to do with this maintenance improvement. Mm -hmm. Yes. May I ask the new town administrator a question? Then? Yes. Certainly. Assuming that we say no, that would pretty well destroy the uh, maintenance department's budget in terms of any flexibility that Mr. Gifford had. Would that be a fair statement? Yeah, I, that would be a fair statement to elaborate. We would be probably back here in the spring uh, requesting a $30,000 transfer. Uh, and uh, Mr. Mr. The Harbor, Harbor Master has good ideas for this money, has good plans and things that we need to get done. That He's the one, he's told me he went down to the pier to, to hammer on the metal. Unfortunately, when he hammered on the metal, the, the hammer went through. So. Uh, this one, this one's tough on there. I mean, there's. It may go beyond of whether it's a legal use or not. It may be what's the practical use on there. Uh, we've already done two months of the summer of mm -hmm. the cleaning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do I understand by that statement that this these funds are will not really be needed until May? No, we are expensive. Oh, no, it's it's already gone. Yes, there, will, there won't be anything needed until May, I wouldn't think. Uh, what, I, what I was saying is more likely than not when we're doing our year-end, not the year-end transfers, but hopefully during the special town meeting in the spring, he would be coming in front of us saying, I need to adjust get my to budget. June, to get through June, right. I need $30,000. No. Go ahead, Don. But this account will be funded again January 1st as mooring fees and everything else comes, excise tax, or excise tax. It all comes again next year. It, the account goes right back up. But you have to, you have to fix that pier. Uh, I didn't say anything about that, but you know, if you worry about depleting a, a fund, it's going to be okay. built up again next year. 
All right. I think we've had enough discussion on this. There is a motion. There is a motion, and there is a second. Is there on this no, side? No, 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 oh, Okay. I make a motion to for favorable action on Article 11 transfer from Harbors and Beaches maintenance account. Second. No. Any new discussion? Anything new? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All those abstain? Three, two, three. Well, that's confusing. It means we help. all have to talk. It would help to bond in. Oh, I don't have anything to say. So, where do you go with that? Three, two, three? Is that a total failure? Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's a positive. That's a positive. Yeah. Two, three, four, two against three. No, that's, that's three, two. Three, four, two against three. Three, four, two against three. Yes. Go abstention. So it's a positive. So it's a positive. It passes. Do you want to four? Okay, go ahead. I wanted to change my vote. To be honest with you. Uh, motion to reconsider. Vote. Well, we just took on eleven. Second. All those in favor of reconsideration? Aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed. Okay. Motion carries. All those in favor of article number 11? Oh, well, excuse me, ma'am. Oh, I'm sorry, you want discussion? Should, no, shouldn't we have discussion if you're... Okay. New I, I, I don't... I don't... Uh, I want to change my vote. <laughs> <laughs> For reasons... I don't, I don't want it to appear... <coughs> Unclear on the warrant. I, I would much, much rather stand up and tell people why I felt this way than rather than say, you know, we abstain because we don't know. I, I would much rather say I voted against. So it's not a hormonal thing. It's no, it's not hormonal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you're sitting that far away. Liz <laughs> will <laughs> so take care of that later. I was waiting for the chair to come across. This is why we sit across each other. Right. Okay, I, my new information. I, I am torn on this article, too. I I think my esteemed colleague sitting, sitting a couple chairs over from me said that we have to be worried about the legal aspect that we have to deal with now. And from my standpoint, we're having to deal with now because we're either going to deal with this now or we're going to deal with it then. And without a, a uh, car harbor master sitting here and say, well, I... I Changed my mind. I don't know what else to say other than we're going to have to deal with this. It obviously is going to become a. We have a financial crisis in this town. We are struggling for money, and now we're going to take thirty thousand dollars out of the the budget, basically, of the maintenance department. I just I can't do that at this point. I'm sorry. My my point oh, is only I want to do things right. Go go ahead, Frank. My point would be the budget has to balance at the end of the year. So a special time meeting in the spring you could handle it just as well. I don't even understand why this has been put out now. David. And I might point out that my email was not answered. You're absolutely right. Uh, Any more discussion on the reconsider? We're just talking reconsideration here now. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? We already voted to reconsider. We, we, voted, we voted to reconsider. I'm, I'm sorry. Seven one. I'm sorry. So we are in the discussion on the actual okay. So now we're going to vote on 11 again, correct? Yes. Can I have a motion? Uh, my motion, favorable action on Article 11. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Three, three. All those abstain? Three, three, two. Three, three, two. Okay. Well, that clears it up. So that's a failure. Mm -hmm. Tom, you got to write that up, buddy. <laughs> I trust Tom. <laughs> it passes, right? No, no, no it, it fails. 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 Tie is a failure. Tie, tie, tie is a fail. You know, you're doing this. You never a bookmaker, huh? Tom loses, Bob. Pay <laughs> <laughs> the big of the money, Ty loses. <laughs> Ask to try to tell the Seattle uh, Green Bay fans. Uh, All right, listen, um, let's move this along as fast as we can. Kelly has to be out of here in 15 minutes, so. We have one article left? Uh, article number 15. Yes. 
we were waiting to find out if some bills have been paid, Madam Chair? Yes. 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 Okay, Derek Stack on Hotspot. I am on this one. I believe the first one, the Woodward and Curran bill from the um, from the town account, that that one has been paid for six thousand six hundred eighty-seven dollars and thirty-seven cents. I have not been given additional bills to be paid on this. Uh, if it changes, I fully expect uh, that this It'll be amended. Uh, this committee will go on town meeting floor and say that the, the their vote is not the same because it's all changed. So that there's one thing or not, basically, uh, not to make light of that. I just okay. Yes. Maybe I misunderstood. You said the first one was paid, though. Correct. Yeah. Okay. It comes down to fifteen hundred bucks. Sure. Yes, sir. But even if it was paid and approved this, then he would be able to expend less money at this point. Is that not correct? Yeah. Are you, I would. You're very specific right. when you're talking about invoice. Right. Invoice. So the invoice is on here. Uh, if if you approve to pay the bills, I just I don't know if that's just an erroneous approval of the first one or not. Uh, I guess my question is, yes. Chair, for whatever reason, if it was paid, yeah. uh, all we're doing is authorizing the payment of the bill. Mm -hmm. It's already been paid. It's not going to incur any more expenses to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the Wait, the yeah. first one has been paid. The other two are still out. Well, sh shouldn't this be amended to, to, to take out the 6 I I can't, unfortunately, this is how it's printed in the warrant. I can't okay. do anything with it until town meeting. Maybe we should uh, not vote on it and then can I be the voice of reason? Can I be the voice of reason? I think we vote on this, but we prepare to amend it. We have the right to First Amendment on the floor. I'm just looking at you. Because you said you have a voice of reason. I know. That, I know. <laughs> You're hopeful. Well, I'm the voice of reason. But my point is, we, we can make the motion for favorable action, vote on it, and make that we have the right to First Amendment on the floor. So, therefore, we can amend this. Yeah. And seeing that, this one also, oh, this is Donna, so I'm not really worried about that one either. So, I'm ready to make a motion. It's less money, Donna, so it doesn't really change the scope of the article. You know what I mean? If it was okay. more money, it's okay. Okay. We're going to vote to pay for outstanding bills anyway. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so um, it was the voice of reason, just okay. for the record. I will move favorable action to Article 15. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Eight. No. Abstain. No. Oh, okay. Two. Done. What? We're abstain also. Six, six, zero, two. Zero, two. Okay. All right. Kelly, we don't have any more. Oh, do we? Um, we've got everything. Um, make sure everything is Kelly. I still have something. I still don't have explanations for some of these. Okay. You get nine today? I'm talking explanations. Explanations oh. from, from the town meeting. I didn't get any from um, the cemetery commissioners. I still don't know those and all the rest. The cemetery commissioners. I, I no, I know that. that. Yeah. I know that. But like one, two, three, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. We did get that information. Mm -hmm. Someone said it right. Well, one, two, and three. You don't have uh -huh. You don't have one, two, and three. No. Okay. So that's tonight's the first night. Really yeah. 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 Of yeah. The explanations on all of that. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but the 15, 16, 17, 18, I know we got that information, but um, someone's kind of got to read through that and take out the information we need. Um, I mean, that would be a huge four page. Yeah, I think it may even, I'll, I'll try and reach out to um, with some of these. Realistically, some there, there's some important information that needs to be said, right. such as the uh, the wind and the solar that's not water pollution control facility. That these are not facilities being built in our town. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. um, so let me reach out to them. I, I understand what you're saying. The explanations they gave were. Mm -hmm. I mean, the information is there. I just I can't just 
write something up that I think is right. They are the petitioners on this, um, right? So that's it's almost a catch point. Right. I don't want to write anything, right? Exactly. This. All right, okay. Instead of us going, yeah. he's saying something, yeah, you and I try to make something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so okay. one, two, and three, Kelly. I, uh, okay. It's not town meeting unless I need to so I'll get them out to you. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, uh, All right. Sure. I think that should be I sent a copy up to her. The feet. The as Claire reached out to Van Miller, and she said she would have it for me yesterday. So I don't have them. Can I, can I ask a question about that? She mentioned to us that she may be withdrawing that article 29. Is that after she had a discussion with our town, uh, interim town administrator? Okay. Did that not what she said in here the other day? She may have, but even if she is withdrawing it, we still need an explanation of what the intent was to begin with. Okay. okay. All right. I, I have one more, one more um, statement that I, I would like to continue. Oh, the last day to submit FinCon recommendations to Kelly is Friday, October 5th. And if you could do that by email, that would be great. Do you want me to get right Yeah, yeah. Don't get you done in your hands. I have my two and they will be done. Yeah, okay, but they won't be in, they won't be done on the computer, right? So well, I go right in and see. Yeah, maybe. Right. Right. Okay, okay, good. Okay, good. Tomorrow you got it. Do you want to get a submit line by email? No, no, but I'm just saying. Okay. Okay, and I'm, uh, I'm going to sit with you something tomorrow. But the one other thing that I would like to, to, to bring up is the financial uh, under the uh, new business. Where I, I'm going to keep this short, okay? We still have no financial. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't see them coming. I'm not seeing any updates from him. And I would like to to express my dissatisfaction with the uh, town administrator. And look, I, you know, I know it is a learning curve, but I'm sorry. I don't want to. Uh, we're going into town meeting with no financials. And we will promise we were going to have to Yes. Obviously, Derek gets information from him. You're getting the information that you need in the question. So we're not getting the reports that we want. Or does he not want to answer that? I can't. We're getting nothing. I got, I believe at last night's selectments meeting, the third, is it two weeks from now, they will be presenting financials to the selectmen? The 23rd, I believe, was the day after. Yeah. Was that the day after the meeting? Well, that doesn't do us any good then. So it is the 16th, what I was under the impression it was the third. If that's the case, then if you're if the selectman has them have them, then most likely we should have them at that point. I think it's almost time that we do a do a we'll give them to the sixteenth and then if we don't have them, I think we should look into writing a letter of complaint to the, the board of select or to the town administrator. Board of select. Whatever. I just think it's our job to do it, folks. He he works for you, there. He does. So are there any other new businesses that anybody has? Old business. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The clinical <coughs> committee letter. Okay, I believe this is the clerk. Could the clerk of the committee take over the minutes? Yes. Yeah. You need to go right now. To what? Oh, thanks so much, Frank. Okay. okay. Sorry. I'd like to correct the record then that Mr. Trudell was the chair of the committee. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, they yeah, well, when they're handing out spears. I think I was. I do. 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 I got you back. You hear the machine gun running. Just sit back and be quiet. I was going to duck, but I said I'm already there. Come on. Do we have Send the rest of them back. Excuse me. Thank you.
We didn't get that. I didn't pass them this way, Don. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. I actually passed Do we need to give him one yet? Uh, yes, I'll read this into our record. Mm -hmm. You got time, Kelly? Because I yeah. read slow. Yeah. To the Wareham, to the Wareham Finance Committee from the subcommittee to study the police education and incentive benefits. They, uh, the Finance Committee formed a subcommittee to review the town's responsibility and obligations with regard to the police education incentive pay slash career incentive pay. Based on our findings, we have determined that the town is only liable for and therefore is only obligated to pay the one half of the benefit attributable to the town under Mass General Law, Chapter 41, Section 180L, or as otherwise contractually agreed upon. Mass General Laws, Chapter 41, Section 108L, the Quinn Bill, was enacted in 1970 by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to encourage police officers to further their education in criminal justice. The Quinn Bill specifies how compensation is to be earned as a percentage of increased salary in increments of 10%, 20%, and 25% based on, on the officers op obtaining an associate degree or 60 points towards a baccalaureate degree a baccalaureate degree or a master's degree, respectively, under the provisions added in 1976. One key component of the statute is reimbursement to municipalities by the state. The statute reads, any, town, any city or town which accepts the provisions of this section and provide career incentive salary increase, what did I do wrong? Don't keep going. Oh, sorry. Incentive salary increase for their police officers shall be reimbursed by the Commonwealth for one half of the cost of such payments upon certification by the Board of Higher Education. The Town of Wareham voted to adopt the provisions of the Quinn Bill at the town meeting held in September 11, 1974. We have not found any change or amendment to this subject subsequent to the town meeting, and the police contracts currently in effect specifically re reference the motion passed at that meeting. The current police department budget shows that approximately 33 officers receive benefits according to the provisions of the Quinn Bill. The total liability of the town for education incentive pay is approximately 363200 which includes the state's 50% and the money for contractual benefits which are outside of the Quinn Bill. The total amount of the town's FY 2013 obligation under the education incentive benefit as per the final voted motion at the 1974 special town meeting is approximately 202,900. Beginning in 2009, the state stopped reimbursing municipalities the full 50% share as required under the statute. The town of Wareham has continued to pay officers fully, which requires the town to cover the state portion from the municipal budget. Several Massachusetts cities, including Boston, chose to fund only their half of the obligation plus any reimbursement actually received. Predictably, several lawsuits ensued. In March 2012, the Supreme Judicial Court rendered an option, opinion in the case of the Daniel Adams versus City of Boston, which found in favor of the City of Boston. The decision paves the way for cities and towns to honor their obligations under the Quinn Bill by Paying the, only, paying the only town's share plus any reimbursement monies actually received from the state. In reviewing other communities' response to this ruling, we noted a variety of different reactions. Some towns have opted to continue paying the full benefit, while others, especially cities with large obligations, are only funding their mandated portion. Based on Wareham's current fiscal situation, we recommend the Board of Selectmen direct the interim town administrator to stop paying the state's portion of the Quinn Bill benefits effective immediately. The annual savings from the police department budget for this item will be approximately 160300 That's it. That's all I got. Except for my one typo. Kelly, I can email this to you. Yeah. 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 Correct. So you don't have to jump there, there, yeah, one, there was one line. There was one line. Only the township. Um, yeah, that was the one I had to stumble Of course I did. <laughs>
See, I, well, I don't, want to, I don't want to make a big discussion of this. Um, I, I notice that we recommend, so that's not the same as directing. Exactly. So I'm okay with that because, in my opinion, we, we did the research. Well, y'all, y'all, that's a southern term, y'all, did the research to find the facts. <coughs> the problem is we had someone sitting here tonight to tell us our facts are wrong. That's what lawyers get paid to do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, my argument's over. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, would you like to have a motion? Motion to adjourn? No. No, don't give me the minutes. What? The minutes. Yeah, oh, I, I have to just, we're going to, somebody gave me a motion to do something move, with this item? I move we accept the letter as you can put it in. Awesome. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? Wonderful. We have four votes. Okay. Um, oh, the me can I have a motion I'll to accept the minutes of the meeting of ooh, I lost my 926? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All those abstain? Do you want a motion to, now we know what we have to, for disposition of this letter. Do you want to wait? He, he, moved, he moved to accept it and, to, and, and send it to the forward it. Do we want to forward it? Do we want to sit, uh, no, be on, get there. on the agenda? The motion was to accept it and forward it. All right, bingo. Okay. All right, now. Yes. Okay. Now make it real quick. Okay, go ahead. All right, and it was last minute that we just found out. Uh, my, in conversations with the uh, High administrative official in our school administration. All right, the contact of DC as to who owns the school buildings and what obligations might occur if uh, state funds were used in building the school. Um, as far as DC is concerned, the state is concerned, the building belongs to the town. The only time that money's become an issue is if the town builds a school with an appropriation from the state and sells it prior to the end of the useful life as defined by the state at which portion the town would be required to pay back <coughs> a prorated amount. All right, now that is for all capital items. All maintenance is to be in the net of school spending. They are responsible for the maintenance of the but all capital items should go back to the town because they affect our budget. <coughs> the state does not turn the building over to the school departments in terms of over to the town. Okay. Okay. Oh, and he also said what well, you, you do at that point has to go through your procurement, whatever your procurement, your town's procurement is. Yeah. That's interesting. Yes, Tom. What's the story with the Hammond School? Do we know anything else more about that as to what can be done with it? What? Who owns it? Who owns it? Well, the town owns it, as, as Mr. Heap just said. But what was the clear title? Was there anything? I thought there was a title issue. Oh. Yeah. Nobody seen. My understanding is nobody has quite seen the deed yet. Right. The whole, there was some issue as to whether or not the superintendent could turn the building back to the town. Well, when the building goes to the school department for school usage, it's, you know, they're responsible for the building, etc. At some point, if they stop using it, they have to return you know, the management of the building back to the town. But it always belongs to the town. There was a question as to whether or not there's anything on the deed that restricts its usage because nobody's quite sure how we got the building. That has to be settled before you can go do anything else to it. If it has a restriction that says it has to be used for the school, then the question is, is well, what level of school? Elementary, any kind of school that can be used for classes or whatever. It's, it's an unsettled issue again. Attorneys are working on it, to my understanding. But there's a, there's a warrant. Well, we hope we have an answer, but uh, at by our meeting, I don't, uh, at this point, we don't. There may be a legal issue with that warrant or Okay. Mm -hmm. Not at this point. All right. Barry, right. any? Does anyone else have any new business? Motion to adjourn. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Have a second. Before we do that, do we have to approve the minutes? We did. Oh, I'm sorry. The next meeting. Next meeting will be next Wednesday's meeting at six thirty. Please, folks, get everything into Kelly. We're going to talk about next meeting. See you tomorrow. <laughs> you know what, well, we might, I don't know. We should all just start work this week, so. Yeah.
We post it if you don't have to, if you don't need it. If we don't need it, we do. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll email everybody in the market and call Dominic. And why? She called me because I don't pay attention to your email. <laughs> Can Frank overturn anything else I've said tonight? What? Can we vote on a journey? No. Can we vote on a journey? We've got a motion and a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same. Aye.